Hi, I'm Anthony Gosh, a consultant spinal neurosurgeon and founder of The Spine MDT. And in this video, I'm going to help you make an assessment of your own spine. This doesn't substitute a consultation, but it gives you some things to think about, uh, questions to ask yourself in making the assessment. And if you do seek medical help, um, I'll tell you when you need to do that. But it will also help you get the most out of that consultation. So most of the time, the diagnosis comes from the history alone, um, just the background story, specific things about the pain. The examination findings then try and help the clinician confirm those suspicions. Um, and then fancy tests and MRI scans and things like that are rarely necessary. They just help completely confirm uh, the doctor's suspicion but they often show other things going on in the spine that are completely irrelevant. And I've done a video um, showing how that can actually make things worse. So I want you to think about the following questions. When did it start? Where is the pain and where does it spread to? How did it start? Is there anything you do that makes it worse? Is there anything you do that makes it better? And are there any other symptoms that might be associated with it? So let's focus on the first three questions. Where is the pain um, is an important one because back the, when people talk about back pain, I see patients that describe that as anything from between the shoulder blades or the base of the neck right down to the base of the spine. So the upper part of your back um, overlies what we call the thoracic spine and that um, encases the spinal cord. It's very rare that you get pain there that spreads down the legs like in the form of sciatica. So pain localized to that region, it's very important to differentiate that from pain lower down in the back. Pain in the lower back um, can sometimes spread to the buttocks and the legs. So in terms of where does it spread to, that's really important. In the lower back, you don't really have a spinal cord anymore. The spinal cord finishes just below the junction of the thoracic spine and the lumbar spine, the lower spine. And in that segment of the spine, you have the nerves, just nerve roots that come out and those innervate different muscles in your legs. So pain in the back that goes down your legs and sometimes the leg pain can be worse than the back pain. That's usually a sign of a trapped nerve um, in the spine causing that pain at that sciatica. Then there's the duration, when did it start? Um, we crudely divide this up into two categories, acute and chronic. Um, and the acute varies, anything from six weeks to three months is often broadly labeled as acute and beyond three months is chronic. Um, and I suppose the importance of that distinction is in the majority of cases, if you've had pain that's come on fairly recently, in most people that usually improves and settles down in that sort of six week to three month period. If the pain is localized in the lower back, um, doesn't travel anywhere, and it's been there less than three months, it should usually settle down. And it's very difficult, even with a scan, even with a scan, it's very difficult to pinpoint and say, this is the source of the pain because I've mentioned in other videos, um, MRI scans are very sensitive. Nobody has a normal spine. We often see dark or worn discs, which should often be considered normal. If the pain has been going on for longer than that six to 12 week period, um, and if it's traveling down your legs, certainly time to start getting it investigated or get a specialist to see you and determine that there is nerve root compression or not and think of strategies to treat it. Um, and that's probably when at that period of time, that's probably when I would advise seeing um, a neurosurgeon or, that doesn't, or an orthopedic spinal surgeon. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna dive in with any, uh, an operation. Um, sometimes injections can help or sometimes from the assessment or depending on the scan findings, there are other le uh, less invasive options. If in that time frame, beyond that time frame, the pain is not traveling down your legs, then it's reasonable to see a physiotherapist or an osteopath, someone who can do a good assessment of your spine. Um, and from further questions that we're gonna cover later, decide what type of um, treatment they can offer. Now I want you to think about how did it start? Did it come on very suddenly? Or did it start gradually? Was it after an injury, um, such as a, a big fall where you struck your back or landed hard on your feet or your buttocks? 
or perhaps after lifting something uh, really heavy such as in the gym. If it came on fairly suddenly uh, and is associated with pain down the leg, um, that's usually a tear in one of the discs between the two vertebrae of your lower back. Um, a piece of that disc fragment has slipped out, it's pinching the nerve and sending pain down the leg. And again, if that's recent, the natural history of that is that the pain usually settles down um, and things resolve, it scars over, heals up without any further treatment required. If it persists for longer, then as mentioned earlier, that's when you need to seek medical attention. In the very acute phase of sciatica, pain radiating down the leg, if there is a slip disc in that region, um, there's this concept of the wet disc. Um, Professor Stuart McGill, who I've interviewed earlier, talks about it. That disc can be quite loose and there's a potential opportunity for an osteopath or a physiotherapist even to carry out a manipulation where we kind of create a bit of a vacuum in that disc space by manipulating your back and that sometimes can suck the disc back in. Uh, it doesn't always work, but sometimes it can. If the pain started in the back only without any leg symptoms or leg pain very acutely after high velocity fall for example, or injury, such as a big car crash or a fall from a significant height, um, it all depends on the actual cause of the injury. I, so for, from a significant height or a car crash or quite a significant car crash of high velocity, it is worth seeking medical attention very quickly to exclude a fracture. You may not always get neurological signs from a fracture, but over time that bone uh, can collapse. Fairly trivial injuries, such as a fall from a chair or from, from standing, um, if you get acute back pain without any leg pain or leg symptoms, it's just you can just wait and see um, how things go. If you get leg pain as a result of it from a trivial fall, Again, if there's no weakness in the legs or anything like that, then you can just give it time and it should settle down. If it started gradually, think about the earlier questions. Um, and again, it comes down to how long it's been there for um, and if it travels down the legs or not. Again, um, in most patients, things usually settle down within the first few weeks. If you can tolerate the pain, Physiotherapy can be helpful, some exercise and assessment and then various exercises and movement in general um, is good for the back. So if you've had pain in your back, it's not too severe. Actually, th this, this myth about listening to your body is not completely true in the context of back pain. All the evidence has shown is that actually moving around, walking, just getting your body moving again will help it ease up. If it's gone on for longer than three months though, it's time to seek attention with that. They can help you a bit further. Doesn't mean you need surgery or anything, especially if it's in the back itself without any leg radiation, uh, but that's when to seek help. Now think very carefully about things that make it worse and things that make it better. Often when I ask patients that in the acute phase, it's quite a difficult one because it's just there all the time and it's severe. But after some time, after, a, after it settles down a little bit, there will be factors that you recognize. Just think about them very carefully of when the pain is worse. If it's worse when you're sat down um, and kind of eases a bit when you get up and walking around, that usually means the pain's coming from a disc. Um, even, even if it's not going down your leg, a tear in the lining of the disc somehow sometimes can cause that pain. Fragments in the disc that are a little bit loose um, and when you're sat down a bit slouched can poke out a little bit and as you move around, uh, as the bone moves around, sometimes it helps suck that disc back into place. So these are important factors. Also, when you sit down, if you're in your car and you're stretching your leg out to reach for the accelerator or the clutch or the brake, um, and that generally makes the pain worse, that again implies it's probably coming from a disc. Again, if it's recent, that usually settles down with time. If it's gone on for more than six weeks or three months, that's when you start needing to think about some physiotherapy if it's not radiating down your leg. Um, usually a good physiotherapist or an osteopath even can teach you some exercises to try and stiffen up that segment of the spine um, and also modify and think about some of your movements and triggers. Maybe sitting and resting um, is better, even if there's some pain there in the background, but walking around 
brings it on or maybe you've got pain that goes down both of your legs when you walk that eases as it settles down um, that's often a sign of spinal stenosis which is a word for narrowing of the spine that's narrowing of the channel that the nerves run through in the lower spine as a result of excessive wear and tear usually of the facet joint of the spine thickening of the ligaments that causes this focal narrowing um, in an area of the lower back where, where the nerves run through um, there are modifying um, techniques you can use, um, learn from a physiotherapist or an osteopath that can help with that. Um, but if that's not improving and it's gone on for some time, I think it is worth seeing a spine surgeon. Again, just for the assessment, not to dive in heavy handed with any major surgery or anything, but I think that's when you need to, to seek assessment to try and catch it a little bit early. And also, does the pain get worse at night? Or is it generally all right during the day, but when you lie flat in bed at night, uh, does it wake you up in the middle of the night? If so, it's really important to clarify if you have any other diseases uh, going on in the body. This is extremely rare, and I don't mean to um, cause any anxiety in this video, but certain tumors can spread to the spine and that can give you pain in the back, which generally gets worse at night when you lie down. In that scenario, go and see your family doctor just for a general um, overall review and they'll know whether to just monitor you a bit further or initiate investigations from there. So now let's look at any other associated symptoms and we'll tick these off as we go along. So um, have you got pain going down uh, one or both legs, numbness in your genital area or any urinary um, retention or incontinence, difficulty passing urine, difficulty with the flow, feeling the flow, or even feeling that your bladder might be full. If so, that's when you need immediate medical attention and an MRI scan to rule out cord equina syndrome. That's compression of all of the nerves in the lumbar spine, which includes the nerves um, that innervate your bladder, your bowel and your sphincters, um, because that's what we're trying to preserve the function of that. And that may require urgent surgery. Have you started to notice weakness um, in your lower limbs? You may not necessarily have pain, but have you noticed you've got back pain, but then the lower limbs are starting to feel a little bit like lead, um, quite heavy when you walk, they fatigue, uh, or maybe your balance is starting to deteriorate. If so, that could be a sign of something compressing your spinal cord. So that's usually higher up the spine in the thoracic region or, or higher up. Um, in which case, if you are losing function, the goal of any treatment is to try and preserve what you have or even regain what you've lost. So that's where there's some urgency in seeking medical attention and getting a scan. Earlier, I touched upon um, tumors in the spine or tumors that are spread to the spine. Um, so that's the same again, weakness in the lower limbs, uh, pain that's worse at night, but also systemic symptoms. Um, think about, have you lost significant weight that you can't explain recently, or are you known to have previous cancer? Again, I don't mean to cause unnecessary anxiety, but in these scenarios, go and see your family doctor for a thorough history, and they can decide whether you need urgent scanning or whether we need to just monitor things a bit further. So those are the main questions that will help you uh, find out what might be causing your back pain, whether it will settle down, when to seek medical attention. Um, a more thorough history goes into more detail with more questions, but those are the main questions that you should ask yourself. And even if you do that before a consultation, it just helps you get a lot more out of a medical consultation. I've mentioned the various types of healthcare professionals you can see. Um, the whole point of the Spine MDT, my practice, is I try to bring together all the different professionals of spine care uh, under my oversight with open channels of communication between us. Um, and I believe that's the best way to get to the root of the problem as quick as possible, but also with a team of people putting their heads together to find the least invasive solution that gives you the longest lasting result. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please click like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps people living with back pain and spine disease find useful information that I try and post on this channel every week. Information, please visit us at spinemdt.com. You can also take our free online assessment tool. Hope you found the video helpful. Thank you for watching.